Hello, everybody! Welcome to the, our very first episode of uh, Mr. Mayo Teaching French. I'm sure I'll come up with a better name by the time that this actually gets posted on the internet. But let's start with regular ER verbs. We're going to learn about conjugation, and in particular, um, French has three kinds of verbs. It has ER, IR, and RE. And that, that all that is is the way that the verb ends, the last two letters. Now, here we have our infinitive forms. We're going to look at three different verbs. The infinitive form is uh, where uh, just it, it, it means in English you would say to speak, to be, to give, to visit, to read. That's the infinitive form in English. We don't, we don't, in English, we don't really have an infinitive form except to say, use the word to and then the verb itself. To sit, to eat, to insert a verb here. Now, what that means is that uh, in French, as you can see it down here, you have these uh, roots on the word, the ER gets taken off, and the new endings are added depending on who, who, you're, who what you intend to mean. So let's take a look first with our first, um, well, first we need to understand pronouns, don't we? So we have six main pronouns in French, and this um, particular version has decided to be a little bit sexist because technically this should read il l or and il and l but uh, our six pronouns technically we're going to say eight because there should be a uh, two more here je tu il slash l nous vous il slash l this means i this is a singular you this is he L E L L E means she, nu means we, vu means you all, right? It's if you want, I'll just put a a, a nice southern twang to that. It means y'all. When you say vu, it means y'all. Y'all be need to be eaten, and il is a plural form. Um, it doesn't mean they all the boys, although it can. Uh, it just means they, and it's masculine. Now that's another thing about French is this distinction between masculine and feminine, and we'll do that in another episode. But just know that there's il, I-L-S, which means they, and l, E-L-L-E-S, which is they, plural, but it is, right, l, with the S at the end, is specific to a group specifically of just either women or um, talking about they or those, you know, plural feminine things. So, let's start. Um, these are the endings on regular ER verbs that we put together. Uh, with je, we put just the E. With tu, we put an ES. With il, l, we put an E. With nu, we put O and S. With VU, we put E, Z. It's easy to remember. Ha, ha, ha. And with IL, L, we have E and T. Notice this is singular, second, third person in the singular. Um, and then we have singular, second, um, sorry, first, second, third person. I said singular here too, didn't I? First, second, third person in the singular. First, second, third person in the plural. This means I, this means you, this means he or she, uh, right? Because I'm thinking about the L here. This means we, this means you all, and this means they. Either they, um, masculine, or a, a mixed group of masculine and feminine things, and L, just, just feminine. So, let's go through each of these verbs. Parler, donner, visiter. So I would say, je parle, tu parles, il parle, or elle parle, nous parlons, vous parlez, il parle. Notice, in each of these, I, if there was a consonant, 
back here, I did not pronounce them. And that's because in French, the whole language is designed to roll off of the tongue so you can say it very rapidly. Now, different languages have dealt with that in different ways. And French is, it's all about the sound. If there isn't a um, vowel here in the next word, then it just goes, nope, we're done. We're only going to say pal. Just so it says pal, 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 palo, pale, pal. Notice that this is actually kind of easy if, if we're just saying it phonetically. Because these four, right? These four are, they all sound the same. They're written differently, but they all sound the same. Our only different ones are palo and parle. Then we have donne, which means to give. And you might think of this as to donate. That's a good cognate. A cognate is a word that we can recognize because of its similarity to something that we already know. So this is a good cognate for us to remember. Je donne, tu donne, il, elle donne, nous donnons, vous donnez, il donne. Boom. And then our third verb that we have here that's regular ER uh, is visiter, which means to visit. So it's another cognate. And technically parler is uh, a cognate as well, but we don't usually say, uh, unless we're you know watching Pirates of the Car Caribbean, when Kira Knightley is taken aboard the ship in the very first movie and she goes, parler, I invoke the right of parler, just meaning to speak. We, we do have that in English. We actually write it as P-A-R-L-A-Y. Again, because English is very heavily uh, influenced by the French language. But here's our third, and technically it is also a cognate. Visiter means to visit. Here we go. Je visite. Tu visite. Il, elle visite. Nous visitons. Vous visitez. Il, elle visite. Boom! That's pretty easy. All this means is I speak, you speak, he or she speaks, we speak, you all speak, they speak, I give, you give, he, she gives, we, we give, you all give, they give, I visit, you visit, he visits, or she visits, let's not be sexist here, we visit, you all visit, they visit. Whew! Now, the thing that we need to understand about French um, in particular is that when we when I say je parle, it could mean one of three things. It mean it could mean I am speaking, it could mean I speak, or it could mean I do speak. To do and to be, um, which is fair and um, être. F-A-I-R-E, or E with a little mountain over it, T-R-E, um, are their own verbs. And I wouldn't say, je suis parle, to mean I am speaking. I would just say, je parle. It, it means the exact same thing. If I say, je suis parlé, then that is, that's actually also incorrect. Because I could just say, je parle, I am speaking. I have this, I don't know, little errant child who comes walk up to me, who starts to talking to me. Maybe this is my child. Daddy, 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 daddy. <clears throat> Je parle. I am speaking. Do you hear me speaking right now? Or someone could ask, you know, do you do you donate? Do you give things? And you go, Je donne. I, I do give. You know, it's it's not like I'm being stingy here. Or, you know, you you could use it as just like any part um, when constructing a sentence, as this is just the verb of what I'm, you know, and how it connects to the rest of the sentence. Je parle en français. I speak in French. Or, je visite uh, le père France. I visit the country France. So, that's our ER verbs. This has been 
a wonderful um, I, I, I'd like to say that this has been a wonderful opportunity um, in order to learn French my my biggest thing that I'm going to say now is to make sure that you listen very closely to the way that it is said and to practice it je tu il elle nous vous il elle parle 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 parlons parler parle don 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 donnant donner Don. Visit, 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 visitant, visiter, visit. Notice very, um, very nasally. A lot of what you will say in French, if you want to learn French, is you're shaping the sound with your lips, but a lot of the actual sound you are forming in the back, very high up almost in your nasal cavity. Je visite. Right? I'm shaping the sound with my lips, but the sound of it is actually coming from almost, you know, the back of my mouth towards my nasal cavity, which is very different from other languages. Uh, for example, uh, German, which we often describe, or German or Dutch, which we often describe as being a very guttural language. Achtung, you know, ein, zwei, drei, or um, ein, drei, drei, Vier, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, elf, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen, sixteen, seventeen, eighteen, nineteen, ten, twenty. All of that is said in the almost in the throat. In French, quand tu parles en français, when you speak in French, a lot of the sound has to come from the back of the mouth more towards the nasal cavity. So, I highly encourage you to read these pronouns, read these verbs, just go through them. Je parle, tu parles, il parle, nous parlons, vous parlez, il parle. Just give it some practice and you will start to be able to speak en français like the best of them. All right, that's what I have for you today. This has been regular ER verb conjugations. Thank you. Bye-bye.